tips for working with deaf and hard of hearing students. Even with technology, hearing is very different for a person who is deaf or hard of hearing. Here's an example of listening through a hearing aid in the classroom. The first condition we would like to demonstrate shows what happens when the teacher walks further than three feet away from the hearing aid. I'm going to walk approximately 10 feet away, and as I do, you will notice that the loudness and the intelligibility of my speech decreases. Mary had a little lamb. Her fleece was white as snow. And everywhere that Mary went, her lamb was sure to go. And here, at ten feet away from the hearing aid, you should notice that you have a very difficult listening situation for the hard of hearing student in the regular classroom. Hearing aids amplify and provide an electronically altered sound to a damaged ear. They are not effective beyond 15 feet and are optimal at 3 feet or closer. Although some hearing aids may reduce background noise, no hearing aid can filter out all background noise. Let's hear what it's like to hear with hearing aids when there is background noise. As the noise sources start, I will again walk 10 feet away from the hearing aid and you should notice that we have an extremely difficult listening condition. Jack, be nimble. Jack, be quick. Jack, jump over the candlestick. Jack, jump high. Jack, jump low. Jack, jump over and burn and slow. Here, at the maximum distance from the hearing aid, you will notice that you have an extremely difficult listening situation because of the competing background noise. A cochlear implant is an electronic device that does the work of the damaged parts of the inner ear. It stimulates the auditory nerve. The signals are then recognized by the brain as sound. Let's experience what it's like to hear through a cochlear implant. Here's what speech sounds like through the implant. Again, first the input to the implant, and then its match. It was a full moon three nights ago. It was a full moon three nights ago. Don't live beyond your means. Following are important tips to keep in mind when teaching deaf and hard of hearing students. Accessing auditory information is often challenging. When teaching, face the class, avoid walking while talking, and stop talking when writing on the board. Provide wait time to answer questions, since it may take longer to process information while speech reading. Preferential seating is also very important. The student should be seated within close proximity to the instructor. Face the student when talking to allow for lip reading. Sit the student away from noise sources, such as windows, doors, pencil sharpeners, radiators, etc. Be aware of background noise, like tapping pencils, moving chairs, or other students talking. These will detract from the student hearing. Auditory fatigue may be common for deaf and hard of hearing students. Use visuals with auditory information. Alternate heavy listening demands with auditory breaks to avoid those Charlie Brown moments. You can assist in making class discussions easier. Call on students by name and point to them so the student knows where to look to speech read. Encourage all students to look at the speaker. Repeat or rephrase what other students say. It is especially hard to hear other students. FM systems are extremely helpful for deaf and hard of hearing students. Here's how it can help. What we would now like to show you is what happens when noise is again added to the listening condition. We're going to use the same noise sources, a fan blowing and people talking, and I'm going to walk away from the hearing aid. When I get 10 feet away, I'm going to turn on the teacher's microphone, and you should notice there's an improvement in your ability to understand what I am saying. Little Miss Muffet, who sat in the tub and eating her curds and rain, along came a spider, who sat down beside her and threatened her Miss Muffet to away. You should notice now that there is an improvement in your ability to understand what I am saying with the FM microphone on. Although this is not an ideal listening condition, it is certainly better than listening at a distance in noise with only the hearing aid. Now I am going to shut off the microphone and you will lose the FM advantage. As I walk back towards the hearing aid, I will shut off the noise sources. And once again, you will be able to hear me clearly.
clearly as I am in back in the optimal listening condition once again. When using an FM system, keep the following in mind. Place the microphone about three inches from your mouth in the center. Make sure the microphone is not covered by clothing, including scarves. Be aware of clanking jewelry. Be sure to turn off the microphone during independent work, when conferencing with other students or teachers, and when going to the bathroom. Place the microphone in the middle of the group during small group work or give it to the student's partner. Stand next to the student's classmates when they are speaking or reading out loud or pass the microphone to them. Putting the microphone on their desk is a big help. Place the microphone by the speaker when playing videos. You can use the audio jack to plug the FM system into the smart board or computer. Enable closed captioning whenever possible. There are various types of FM systems. One FM system is the Phonak in Spyro. The screen goes dark to conserve energy. You may need to press the microphone mute button twice, once to activate the screen and once to mute or unmute, just like your cell phone. Another system is the Phonak touchscreen. It utilizes digital transmission. The touchscreen provides several beneficial features. When the teacher is wearing the unit on the lanyard, the unit picks up the teacher's voice directly, although the teacher can still stand near a student to pick up their voice. Place the microphone flat in the middle of a small group. The unit has three small microphones in the top left corner. The microphone closest to the person speaking will automatically activate. When classmates are reading aloud or speaking, the microphone can be pointed towards that student and pick up that particular student's voice. The bottom button on the unit will flash red to remind the teacher the unit is on mute. When two units are being used, both teachers can talk at the same time and both can be heard. No matter what FM system your student is using, make sure to request instruction on that FM system in order to make optimal use of it. I want to thank you all for your assistance with providing our deaf and hard of hearing students with optimal access to auditory information and the best listening conditions. Have a wonderful school year.